This little single board computer can transcode even 8K videos at 30 FPS. Show me a better way to run Jellyfin with full range of transcoding and HDR tone mapping support. I'll wait. And while we wait, let me show you how you can also set up a personal media server for yourself just like this one. This is a very cost effective and well designed RK3588 SBC called ROC5T from Ratsub. If you have been following the channel then you know I love single board computers. And these RK35 series SOCs are the hotshots in this category. Let's start by putting a heatsink on it. ROC chip SOCs are very power efficient so a passive heatsink like this is more than enough for all of them. But if you're curious why am I using this board specifically, well unlike other RK3588 single board computers, this one already has two full sized NBUG to NVMe support ready to go out of the box no extra headache. Now we need to flash an OS and we're gonna go with Armbian 25.8.1 because aside from the top tier board support it has for Radza SBCs, the developers are super nice people and there's also another reason which I'll tell you in a minute. Once the image is flashed, the partitions should look like this on GNOME disks and if you're allergic to GUI tools, you can also flash it with CLI tools. I promise I don't judge you one way or the other. Put in the flashed microSD card, connect the peripherals and power it up with a 12V 2A battle jack. On the first boot, it will take a few extra seconds to start up and then ask you to set it up. If you are new to Armbian, like I was a couple of months ago, then you will have an amazing time with the guided setup. First, set the root password. Create a user account, connect to a Wi-Fi network if you haven't connected to the Ethernet, set your time zone, locals, etc, etc and bam, you are in. It is generally a good idea to update your package manager and also upgrade the installed packages. After that, you can disconnect all the setup peripherals and headlessly deploy it with wired network where you wanna keep it running for the long term. Just note down its IP on your home network so you can connect to it remotely. Now run this fancy little command Armbian config. This is the magic sauce that makes the rest of the setup super easy and it's the main reason why we're using Armbian in the first place. Compared to installing Jellyfin the hard way, with Armbian config you just press a couple of keys and get Jellyfin up and running in under a minute with all the bells and whistles and optimizations pre-applied. And while at it, you might as well install Portainer to manage Jellyfin or any other such containers you might end up installing. Cause let's face it, not everybody wants to use Docker CLI or write Docker Compose files. Once the Jellyfin container is up and running, we move to the next step add media to the media server. Start by taking a note of the media volumes that Armbian config mounts by default and their paths on the host. That's where we would mount our two NVMe drives that we connected. Just mounting them once at the runtime won't be enough as it will be reset on reboot. So we're gonna need to make a small change to the FSTAP file and add a permanent entry for each of the drives to be mounted on that specific path on every reboot. I just copied the system drive settings as another entry to avoid formatting mistakes and then change the values to fit each of the NVMe drives that we have added. Make sure to use the full path, correct file system and proper modes. Then reboot the board for the changes to take effect and on the next boot these drives should be mounted and ready. I don't have any media on these drives so let me put on something there for the demonstration. Now let's check Jellyfin. On a browser, visit the port it's running on which is usually 8096 and on the first run it will ask you to set up the admin account, add media library language settings and remote access. With that, we can now log into our Jellyfin instance and start setting it up on its dashboard. There are plenty of settings that you can tinker with, but first go ahead and add a library. Choose the path where media can be discovered and press OK. Once it's done scanning the media, caching metadata, posters, etc., you will have a first class media center experience hosted in your own network, serving the media that you own and is ready whenever you are, without charging you subscription fees for ad free experience and then shoving ads down your throat anyway. Ironic. I'm literally watching a Black Mirror episode you made about technology scamming people. We call that immersive viewing. Experiencing what you're watching makes it that much better. I'm also going to figure out your viewing habits so we can brag about it to our advertisers. But that's not all. The RK3588 SOCs that we're using has an excellent media pipeline called RKMPP which Jellyfin can take full advantage of. Visit the transcoding section of the Jellyfin admin section and enable transcoding with Rockchick MPP or RKMPP and turn on all the codecs for decoding because we can. While at it, also turn on the tone mapping for HDR content and make sure to apply the changes and confirm it. Now let's stream some media from other devices to see how it works and then keep a tab on the playback info. It's a 4K video that's streaming directly without any transcoding for now so let's go ahead and force it to transcode to a lower bitrate. Um, nope, the video just won't play. 
This is one of those times where you are too close to the finish line to practically taste the victory but technically it's not done until it's done so I can't possibly end the video here. So I did what any self-respecting engineer would do, roll up their sleeves, start fixing the problem and think to themselves, how hard could this be anyway? Well, long story short, it took over 3 months testing on 3 different Armian releases and on multiple RK3588 variant devices even other than ROC 5T and two upstream patches to unbend config. For every screen recording setup that you see, trust me, there are at least 20 to 25 trials and errors that you don't. But then, finally, it worked. Even a decent x86 desktop would struggle to do this without a discrete GPU and even if it does, it will almost be 10x the price and 100x the power budget. That's bonkers. So let's recap what you have learned today. Rockchip's media pipeline or RKMPP is an excellent platform for on-demand real-time transcoding for personal media server use cases. Jellyfang doesn't only run, it flies even on a relatively low-budget single-board computer when it's the right one. Armian config takes the edge off and makes it extremely easy and painless. And while we're at it, here are the steps to set up Jellyfin with RKMPP acceleration using Armian config in a nutshell. Find an RK3588 based board supported by Armian. Install and set it up with the latest Armian release. Update Armian config package and install Jellyfin. Persistently mount Jellyfin media volumes on Armian. And then run Jellyfin setup wizard and enable transcoding. So, whether you are a seasoned Jellyfin Maestro or hearing about it for the first time, I hope you learned something new. So if so, then drop a like and don't forget to subscribe because topics like self-hosting, personal servers, home labs are very niche so the YouTube algorithm doesn't often know what to do with it. So drop a comment while at it. If you have enjoyed this video, then you might also like the one where we ran local LM server with DeepSeq R1 on Rockchip with Arcane PU. Or if you are more into home labbing, then maybe you will like the 3 tiers of budgetness video. Anyways, thanks for watching and break it till you make it.